<laughs> well, thanks for uh, coming, inviting me out to, to meet you. Who are you? I'm Phil Libin. Very good to see you. Yeah. I'm the uh, CEO of Evernote. And uh, you just had a big weekend. Uh, iPhone launched on Friday, and you're on, you're part of the uh, first apps that are on the iPhone uh, App Store. Right? We are. We managed to get it in for the for the day of launch. Actually, the day before, because it kind of launched on Thursday. I think to everyone's surprise. But, yeah, uh, we <laughs> to to Apple's be. surprise too, because <laughs> my son downloaded it, and then it, the link got and, taken down. And, and there it was. Yeah. So we were, we were very happy to actually made it in on on Thursday. Very cool. Um, what is Evernote? What what do you guys do? Uh, we're trying to make a, an external brain. So the idea is uh, there's just so much stuff going on, so much information that uh, it's, it's just too much to keep track of. So we want to make a service where anytime anything happens that you want to remember, you just remember it. You just put it in Evernote. You throw it in your external brain, and then you'll always know, be able to find it you know, a month later, 10 years later, whenever you want. And you're not just an iPhone app, right? I, I, all my friends on Windows tablet PCs right. swear by it, and, and you work on Macs and Windows. Yeah, the idea is if, you know, if it's going to be your external brain, it has to be absolutely everywhere. So you know, at some point, it'll just be an implant in your head. Until that happens, uh, the next best thing is to make sure that whatever, you know, whenever you reach your hand out, whatever computer or phone or camera you, you put your hand on, you're going to be able to get Evernote on it. So iPhone is a great you know, portal into the Evernote service, but yeah, you can get to it through, we have a Mac client, we have a Windows client, we have a web client, we have a Windows mobile client, a bunch of others. So yeah. however you can get to it, you get to the same functionality. It, it sounds like you were, you started, did you start based on David Allen's principles? Because it sounds like your, your system is very compatible with his, which is get things out of your head and into something else so that you don't have to waste all your brain energy re remembering the milk you have to pick up on the yeah. way home tonight or remembering you know, uh, a, a quick thought you had on the freeway or something like that. We definitely have, you know, there's a lot of inspiration uh, in, in this. There's been a lot of people you know, working in the field of, of memory enhancement, memory augmentation. Uh, we were actually founded, Evernote was founded by uh, a guy named Stepan Pachikov, who's this uh, the Russian American you know, genius inventor who started a, a few companies before, all in the area of image recognition, ink recognition. Uh, actually, a lot of our core team were the people that did the Apple Newton way back in the day, that wow. did a lot of the recognition technology on that. Uh, so we've, we've been working on this problem of how do, we, how do you get the stuff out of your head, exactly as you say, so you can focus on more important things. Um, and I think we're, we're the only people that are really pursuing this as a single vision and trying to commercialize it. So there's a lot of R&D going on. We're trying to be an actual consumer-friendly product that you know, everyone can use immediately. Yeah. Um, how is the company funded? We're privately funded. Yeah. We uh, have uh, one round of uh, uh, investor financing a couple of years ago, and then we are hopefully just about to close our second round. Oh, very cool. And how are you making money? Because the iPhone app I downloaded was free, right? Yeah. Um, well, everything is a service. So we have a uh, two subscription levels, so the Evernote service. All of our clients are free. Uh, but we have a, a free subscription level and a premium subscription level. And the okay. premium one is uh, 5 bucks a month or 45 bucks a year. And that gets you very large upload quotas and a whole bunch of other goodies. Uh, the free service is free. We don't make any money off of that yet. Um, we'll. Ideally, we'll try to figure out how to actually make money off of the free users through yeah. some kind of advertising or something else. We're not doing it yet because we really want to figure out how to make it useful to users before we before we introduce anything. So we've got uh, we've got enough funding to get through a while without worrying about short-term revenue. Yeah. Our premium account uh, pickup since we launched it just a couple of weeks ago has been very good, so we're pretty optimistic about it. Yeah. Um, if I'm using this for business, I probably want to keep it private to just myself, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking about business stuff and putting that into my Evernote. Right. What, what guarantees do I have that nobody else is able to see that, including you? Well, you know, we have, um, you can make different kinds of, of notebooks, different kinds of notes in Evernote, uh, private ones, public ones. Um, you can even make local only notes. So for example, oh, really? if you're using the Windows client or the Mac client, you can have a notebook that you designate as local, which never gets uploaded to our servers. Of course, if you do that, you lose some of the, you know, access it from everywhere thing. So, you know, you're, you're losing quite a bit of the functionality, but for a small subset of your data that you really don't even want it to leave your computer, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, other stuff you can put in private notebooks, which are synchronized, but all access to them has to go through authentication, authenticated by you. Uh, you can encrypt any parts of your notes. Um, anything you encrypt, actually, um, we never see the key or stored in any way, so that's completely protected. Uh, any information in private notebooks that, that is encrypted is just stored in our servers using you know, kind of the best practices and security and privacy policies that we have. Yeah. So we have a, you know, we've built out a data center, we have procedures for who's, who can access it, who can't, and so on. A lot of data you can put in public notebooks if you actually want people to share them, you want people to see them, you want to give them to your friends or something, and then you can do that. So basically our, our goal is you know, 
you can go everywhere from absolutely everything I do is visible to everyone in the world, all the way to, you know, everything is encrypted and stored only on my local file system, and you know, wherever each person falls on that spectrum is. Uh, can I do a semi-public now? In other words, a group, it's something for my group, you know, so that I can uh, work with, let's say, ten people, but lock everybody else out. Um, currently, when you publish a note, um, it's. Um, uh, it's published just on the on the web. You get a you know a, a URL which is as obfuscated as you want to make it, an RSS feed which you can then choose to publicize or to send out to people. Yeah. But currently there's no um, there's no locking out other users. Okay. Uh, pretty soon we'll be launching a, a a more generalized sharing service where we'll be able to to uh, designate account level access. So you'll be able to say you know share it with this group of friends or share it with that group of friends, and that'll also leverage uh, social network stuff. So you know you'll be able to say I only want my you know Facebook contacts to see it, or I only want this particular you oh, know group of ten people to see it. Um, but that's uh, those are you know those are things we'll be launching kind of towards the end of the summer and beyond. Right now it's either just you. Yeah. Or you can publish it, and then if you publish it, it's really kind of up to you to figure out, you know, who who knows the URLs of where to see it from. Right. Does does it publish over? Do you have a Facebook app? We do. Yeah. Oh, okay. We actually have a, a a widget which you can put into your Facebook uh, profile or your blog or anything, and then any public notebook you can you can display through that widget. So uh, if you you know, I just came back from Japan, and so I took a bunch of pictures of wacky Japanese signs. Um, Publish that as a public notebook, and then if you go to my blog or my Facebook page, you can actually see a little widget that has thumbnails of all the signs, um, including all of our image searching is there. So people can, you know, search for no smoking or whatever, and they'll find the, you know, just the pictures about no smoking signs. Japan has really cool no smoking signs, much better than they are here. Interesting. Um, a lot of my friends who are into the Windows Mobile world and tablet PC world have been swearing by Evernote for a while because of the ink recognition. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what you can do there um, that so you the, can't maybe do on an iPhone or on a Mac. Right? Um, the roots of the company were always in uh, ink recognition, ink technology. Uh, you know, going all the way back to the you know to the Apple Newton days and, and lots of iterations after that. Um, so when I when I started Evernote just about a year ago, we had a pretty loyal following of people on the Windows platform, especially tablet PCs, but, but more generalized in Windows, because we just really have unequal technology for being able to write on a screen you know, with a stylus and then index, recognize uh, what that text says. Uh, and we're kind of better than everyone else in two ways. And the actual quality of the writing, we have a, a ton of R&D about just actually how to do, how to make writing on a screen look good. It's, I was shocked when I came into the company about how hard it actually is and it's something I never thought about. And the flip side is how do you actually recognize it? Um, so those are kind of the roots. What we decided is the vision has to be much broader than that. We can't just be about tablet PCs, about digital ink. You know, yeah. we're not sure whether digital ink is becoming more popular or less popular. But a lot of this IP that we had could be applied to general purpose memory. So we really made an effort to get out, you know, out from the, the roots of a Windows digital ink stuff into Macs and iPhones and web and a general service for all kinds of memories. Yeah. What, what surprising things have you learned since doing the company? Since we're working with the company or starting this product, starting this company. Wow, there's been a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of surprises, a lot of stuff. Uh, a very educational experience for me. Um, a lot of it is, um, it's often better not to put in the feature than to than to put one in. Uh, it, it takes more discipline to actually decide. Like you look at the whole universe of things that people are asking for, and we have a very active user base that they all yeah. want something, and for the most part, they're good ideas. Uh, actually, looking through that and saying, well. You know, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, and we're, we're explicitly not going to do that. Uh, that's a lot harder than I thought it would be um, for a consumer product. Yeah. And the things that people react to are, are surprising. You know, sometimes we'll, we'll roll out a, uh, uh, you know, a big feature that we think is a, is a big deal, and people, you know, people like it and everything's fine, but then, you know, what, what people will really focus on is a particular, you know, what we thought would be relatively small actually becomes the main use case. Yeah. Interesting. Um, what kind of customer? What kind of things are people doing with it? Um, give me an idea of it. Do you have some favorite customer stories or, or uh, stories of what you've seen customers you we, use it for? Yeah, we periodically ask people to tell us how they use Evernote, um, and uh, we always get good. You know, we always get great stories there. There's a lot of the kind of what you would expect. So it's very popular with with students. Very popular with professionals. We have a lot of doctors and lawyers using it. Basically, people that have something that they want to keep track of. People you know, who's What's in their mind is important to them, um, but then there's always there's always edge cases which are kind of surprising. Um, a lot of people uh, tweet about how they use it. I think it's my favorite one that I saw a couple of weeks ago. Somebody tweeted saying that Evernote is perfect for keeping track of your sins so that they're easy to confess when you're at church. 
uh, which is <laughs> a good use case. Um, Got to read off a long list in my case. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it just so shows you can take that. screen captures with, with Evernote? Then? Yeah, you can highlight a portion of a screen. You can automatically capture into Evernote. And we'll actually index the text in all your graphics. So if, if the screen has text in it, you'll be able to search it. There's just like you know, when you take a picture of someone's business card. I mean, yeah. The reason I take pictures of everyone's business cards with my phone is that I can then search for them. Oh, so you, know, you convert the text on my business card to, a t or uh, the graphic to uh, text? Yeah, we index all the images, and we pull out we pull out text, and we index it and make it searchable. So we don't we don't do transcription, yeah. but you know if I search for, you know if I search for your name or if I search for you know fast company, I have a very good chance of actually finding you know anything that has uh, uh, that has a, the, that text in it in images, and then I can you know I can read the rest of the information off the card or do whatever I want with it. Very cool. Anything else you'd like me to know about Evernote? Um, I think, you know, what we're trying to do is to build this platform for for your for your memories, for your brain, kind of online everywhere. Uh, we're going to be releasing a set of public APIs later this summer, which uh, give everyone access to it, and we're really hoping that uh, we'll see all sorts of unexpected uh, use cases of what people actually build on top of their electronic memories using uh, using our APIs. Very cool. Where do we get it? Uh, you go to Evernote.com, yep. and uh, anyone can sign up right now. We are in open beta. We just went into open beta a few weeks ago. Uh, sign up. You can download all of the clients, including the, the iPhone client and, and everything else, uh, and start using it uh, within a few minutes of signing up. Very cool. It's a very cool product. Thank you very much. Thank you. So yeah, I'd love to see a demo of Evernote. Sure. Um, so again, the idea is memories happen to you in one of two different ways. Either you're sitting in front of your computer, in which case you want to remember something that, you, that you're seeing in a web browser or email or something, or you're not. And if you're not in front of your computer, then your chances are you're in the real world. You've got your phone on you. Yeah. You work on iPhone. What other kinds of phones do you work uh, on? Work on any phone. So you don't need an Evernote client on your phone to make it work, because you can, uh, you can use our mobile web version from any phone, and you can email any picture to a special Evernote account. But we have custom software on iPhone, on Windows Mobile and Pocket PC phones. And we're, we're coming out with custom software for Blackberries, um, Nokia's, and Sony Ericsson's. So okay. basically, we'll work with every phone today, and then some of the higher-end phones that just get a much better experience with custom software. Very cool. So yeah, let's see what you can do here. Sure. So uh, let's say you want to uh, remember something that you're seeing online. So uh, this isn't your website. This is, no, I'm this is uh, surfing the web. Surfing the web. A cool picture or a cool in, uh, article or something like that. Right. And I want to. Uh, uh, I'm going to maybe remember this uh, guitar chord thing. So I can just highlight just the section I want. Uh, and I can hit um, uh, my uh, clipper, which we have. So I just hit clip to Evernote. Uh, and that will uh, basically pop up. That's already in my Evernote account. Yeah. Uh, I get a little confirmation here so I can see what it is. Uh, I can put in tags if I want. So for example, I have a tag that I called want, which ah. is everything that I clip online that I want. I tag with the word want. And uh, that's it. So now it's uh, seamless. Now that's in my Evernote account. Uh, if I, you know, I keep going, and I, you know, want to remember something else, I don't know that's this. Cool idea because everybody asks you for birthday or Christmas gift ideas. <laughs> yeah. And you, you never can think of anything at that time. But if you have a, a it, file like this, you can just forward it on and it, say, here's everything I. I yeah, exactly. Any, 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 anything own. that you'd want. So any, basically, anything that you remember. So for example, I just got this image. I can just drag it into. Uh, into my Mac Evernote client, and it'll, it'll just go right in there. Now let's talk about this client. So this is the client? This is the Macintosh client. OK, give me a tour around. What, what, what are we seeing here, um, like along the left and along the top? Sure. You've got uh, a list of notebooks here. So Evernote lets you have multiple notebooks. Uh, some users just have one, they put everything in it. But if you want to get a little bit more organized, you can have multiple notebooks, uh, you know, home or work or travel, however you want to organize it. Uh, you can have three different types of notebooks. You can have um, private notebooks uh, or public notebooks. Uh, by default, notebooks are, are networked and synchronized, but only you can see them, so they're, they're private notebooks. Yeah. Uh, but if I have certain notebooks that I just want to share with everyone, for example, I have one that's uh, old comic book ads that I clipped out of a, a 1960s Spider-Man comic. Um, I've made that public so anyone can see them. So I, I can scroll around and see all the notes here. And I'll show you how to, how to do some of the searching through this later on. Okay. Um, now, you were telling me before that any of the text in these images, mm -hmm. even if it's graphics, yeah. gets converted to text underneath so that you can search on that text? Uh, it gets indexed, that's right. So uh, let me show you. Um, well, the indexing is done on the server. Okay. So once I've, uh, and everything's automatically synchronized. So the, anything that's available on the server is pushed down to the Mac client, the Windows client, the iPhone client, everything else. 
So let me, uh, uh, these are all of my notes. And let's say I want to search for, uh, what I, one of the things I always do is I take pictures of uh, business cards. Right. And then if I want to search for them, I can just uh, start typing. So, so Rocky and Roderick. <laughs> Roderick, so as I type Roderick, it'll find wow. just that card. And it didn't even need to be that sharp in there. No, no, it? and and you can see it's highlighting the the text that that it found. And you just did that a few minutes ago when we walked in with our camera. Uh, yeah, it only takes. Um, well, if you're a free user, um, it takes usually a few minutes to get everything indexed. Uh, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on how busy the servers are. One of the benefits of being a premium user is you get it indexed fast. You always kind of go to the head of the line. Um, I get to be a premium user, so it happens within 10 seconds usually. And you did this with your iPhone, which has a crappy camera. Uh, this one's even worse. This one I actually did with the eyesight. Ah. So I can, uh, you know, basically what you can do is uh, you do the eyesight note, and then. There you are. Oops. <laughs> Take a snapshot. Yeah, so, uh, and that's it. Now it's in there. Um, and it'll, uh, it'll go up to the server and, and it'll, it'll get synced uh, and, and indexed. So one of the things I do is basically whenever I meet someone, I take, I take a picture of their business card. Uh, if I'm sitting down, I use it with, with this camera. But if I'm not, I do it with my iPhone or my Windows mobile phone. I'll take pictures of whiteboards. I'll take pictures of receipts. This is how I do my expenses. Um, I'll take pictures of, for example, um, one of the things I do is I take pictures of boarding passes. Um, now I, I have 8,000 business cards. I'm thinking of doing this uh, or paying my kid to do this. Well, um, is there a, a, an automatic way to do a whole bunch at a time and have them tagged with like business card or something like that? Um, there's a, yeah, there's a bunch of things you can do. So you can get pictures in here in lots of different ways. You can, uh, you can scan them in and just drop a whole bunch of them into your client. Uh, there's a special email address that you get, so you can automate just sending email pictures in. Uh, you can do it with a clipper, the way, the way I just showed you. We are launching our public APIs pretty soon, and that'll basically, I'm sure once we've done that, it'll be just tons of ways that you can automatically import information in, automatically get it tagged. We're hoping the community really goes crazy, you know, writing Evernote-based integrations with the APIs. But right now, yeah, you just take a bunch of pictures and just, just drag them in, select all of them. Uh, so l let me give you an example. I went to CES yeah. uh, earlier this year. I walked around with my phone, took a bunch of pictures. So I've got 93 pictures. When I came, when I came back, these are all synced to Evernote. I just selected all of them, you know, just do a lasso drag on however many I want, and I drag them to a tag. So I've got this tag CES. I just kind of drag them in there. They're already all tags. So there's 93 in there. So yeah. the, assigning a tag is very straightforward. These are manual tags that I make, which you don't have to use. So some people make a lot of tags. Some people don't use, make any. So now I've got 93 tagged things from the CES show, which was kind of lame, unfortunately, this year. Uh, but now let's say I want to search. So I, I remember that I met a guy at the Wacom booth. You know, those are the guys that make those, those tablets that you yep. can write on. So I type in Wacom, and you see I've got two results that are yep. tagged tagged CES yep. that have the word Wacom. And I can, I can remember, oh, yeah, it was this guy. I recognize him. Yep. Um, the other thing that comes up is their booth. Now, if I actually open this image, I can see that it, it read Wacom off of his shirt. Are you kidding me? So it did, I didn't tag this Wacom. I did tag it CES, but I just read it off of his shirt. Oh, my. And now, now I, I can... understand why everybody was, is praising you guys on Twitter and stuff like that. Well, this is kind of what, what we're after. We're after this very simple, like, I met this guy. I want to remember him. Here's a picture of him. Uh, here's a picture of his name tag, uh, Steve Smith. And now I've, I've got that memory. Of course, it, it also works the other way. So let's say that uh, let's just reset everything. Uh, so you see I've got 1,553 notes total. Yeah. And I'm going to search for CES. Yeah. There's it down to 123. And I remember it was somebody named Steve. So I search for CES Steve. I get two results. Yeah. Again, that's, that's good enough. Right? I, I can tell from the thumbnails who I'm looking for. Uh, this one came up because I think uh, she has Stevenson in her name. Yeah, so what did Stevenson is reading her name tag. Uh, and, wow. and he came up because he's got, and if I remembered that his last name was Smith, then that would, he would be the only one. And, you know, it's reading that off of his name tag. Oh, my. Um, <laughs> and so that's kind of the idea. It's, it's not to do, it's not to find the last node. It's to very quickly narrow down your memories to a manageable few thumbnails and then 
lets your brain, your, your biological brain, take over and say, oh yeah, it's that one. You know, once, you, once you're down to you know, five, six, ten results, and you're just seeing in the thumbnails, it's just trivial to just, you immediately know which one you're looking for. Okay. Um, so for example, I just met with, uh, um, uh, I met with some people from Sony. Yeah. Uh, and I took their business cards, so I searched for Sony, and I got 20 results from Sony. Uh, a lot of them is because I also was just in Japan, and so I just have a lot of web clips and things like that that have Sony in them. Uh, but even here, I see the, the thumbnails, and you actually notice that on the Mac client, the size of the thumbnails is proportional to how many results they are. So basically, as you narrow it down, they, they grow in size so you can read them. But I can see that these three are business cards, yeah. uh, you know, and the rest of them aren't. Uh, I can zoom those in. Yeah. Uh, or if I remember, well, I don't remember the person's name. Uh, that's kind of why I want to find his business card. But I remember that he was at Sony, and I remember that his title had the word principal in it. So uh, I'm just going to type in principal. Here we go. So Sony principal. There we go. Uh, and it found this business card, and it can read um, principal off of the card. Yeah. And of course, it can read Sony off the card. So if I were to continue searching on here, you know, it, it picks up the word Sony in the logo, in the email address, wow. and so on. And you can tell this is a pretty bad quality picture. I mean, this is a snapshot with the eyesight camera. It's sort of blurry. It's sort of washed out. Um, and yet, we can still do a pretty good job of indexing this and making it searchable. Not a perfect job, obviously. There's going to be lots of times where it doesn't work. Yeah. But that's not our goal. Our goal is just, since this is your memory, we just want to give you enough hooks so that you always have a good shot of, in a single search, narrowing it down to five, six, ten results, and then jumping to the one you want. That's killer. <laughs> Thanks. That's we think so. That's killer. I mean, a few other things in there. You can leave audio notes, right? Yeah. Can you leave video notes as well if you're on your ISO? Or um, or? You can leave audio notes right now. We okay. don't support video notes yet, but that's that's coming. Obviously, we want to make sure that we've got our, our network infrastructure uh, fully up to speed before we, before we roll that out. Uh, but audio notes you can do. Um, you can also integrate this really well with, uh, with Jot, okay. or really with any of the audio indexing services. So when you sign up for Evernote, you get a, um, a special email address. You can put that into your Jot contacts, and then you just call yourself, and you say, you call Jot, you say Evernote, and then you leave a message, and a few minutes later, it'll show up in all of your clients as a transcribed note you know, with, uh, with the audio attached, and that's how you've set it up. Um, so you can capture, the goal is really to let you capture you know, any type of memory that you, that you want. Uh, one thing that we see people doing a lot is actually um, taking pictures of notebooks. So, um, you know, uh, taking notes in a, uh, uh, with, with pen and paper in a notebook or in a whiteboard and then just snapping a picture of that uh, and having it available. Now, how well, does it, how well does it uh, index handwritten text? Um, it's, it's, uh, it depends on a, a lot of factors. Uh, basically, if it's, um, uh, if it's fairly clean handwriting, by which I mean not good handwriting, but yeah. not overly clever. Like, this is actually going to be a difficult example because, like, all of this stuff is not handwriting, it's, it's sort of meant to look artistic, right? It's yeah. meant to look like it's, 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 it's intentionally complicated or involved. And of course, that's hard for a computer to read because the whole point of this is it's hard to tell, like, what's a letter, what's a, you know, where's this, what's a star, what's a line. But if it's just, you know, handwriting, uh, it does a pretty good job. Uh, so let me show you. Um, I do a lot of stuff. I remember I flew to Vegas, again, for that CES show. And um, uh, I remember I stayed at the Venetian Hotel. So I'll type in uh, Venetian. And uh, I already see what I'm looking for because, again, the thumbnails make it really easy. I'm looking for my boarding pass, and I, I can tell it's this because I can see it. But I can keep searching more. I remember that it was at CES, and uh, it was Las Vegas. Okay, so it was CES. Um, I can keep searching further, but I know it's, it's this um, yeah. boarding pass. And then when I open it up, I can see this is a snapshot of wow. my boarding pass. And it'll find pretty much everything on here. So it'll find, uh, you know, America. Yeah, no uh, it'll find Venetian. Uh, it'll find my name, Libin, I think. Yeah. Maybe it will find Libin. Oh, yeah, yeah it yeah. did, yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll find CES, um, Vegas. Um, so a combination of printed text, handwritten text. Um, it does a pretty, pretty decent job of indexing uh, stay. Again, it, it's definitely not perfect, but the goal of it is to give you enough flexibility to, to find something. Even if it can't find, even if it can't recognize a particular text, it knows that there's text on it. Uh, it also knows other information about the note. So for example, if you 
took the note with uh, any device that's capable of geotagging it, like the iPhone client. The new iPhone client geotags everything. Yep. It's got your geolocation in it. Um, wow. So, for example, I could say, well, I don't remember I was in Paris three years ago, and uh, I was sitting outside a restaurant, and I had a phone number and a cocktail napkin. I really want to find that phone number. Well, that's a lot of information. You know, if, if I remember any of the words that are, that are wrote on that napkin, I can search for them. But if I don't, or if I can't find it, I can say, well, OK, it was in Paris. I can geographically search for around Paris. It was about three years ago, so I can search for about three years ago. And I know it had handwritten text, so I can search for it. It contains handwritten text. That's going to narrow it down to, you know, I don't know how many notes I took in Paris three years ago, uh, you know, uh, with handwritten text, but you know, probably no more than five or six. It's going to narrow them down, and then I see the thumbnail, I see the actual original napkin that I could have taken a picture of with my phone, and and I get it, uh, and I get the original document, which is the most evocative form of the memory. I don't get some ASCII transcription of it, which could be right, or could be wrong, or could be losing some doodle, because really maybe what I'm looking for is a doodle in the, you know, in the background or some diagram that I sketched up. The point of Evernote is gives you enough ways to find your original memory so that you can, you can get it, you can be looking at it, and it can be in front of you again, and you can re-experience everything that was in your mind when you originally had that experience. Very cool. Oh, that's really cool. Is there any limit to how many notes or how many pictures or how many audio clips I can put into the system? Uh, yeah, there's, so there's two subscription levels. Okay. Um, there's a free subscription level, which you're limited to 40 megabytes of new notes every month. So there's, never, there's no restriction on the total number that you can have. Now, how yeah. many notes have you created in a month? Uh, well, let's see. So I can look at my, my stats. So I got 30 days left in my monthly cycle, and I've used 10 megabytes. Okay. Um, so not, you know, I'm a pretty heavy user. Yeah, um, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got 1,553 total notes, and I've been using the system for, you know, it, it was probably in alpha maybe six months ago. So. Yeah. Um, 40 megabytes is enough per month for, depending on what kind of notes they are. So if you're taking text notes or web clips, it's, it's pretty much infinite. You know, you're not going to fill up 40 megabytes of text notes. If you're doing a lot of you know, high-res pictures or things like that or audio, then, then, it, then it's smaller. But our goal is to make that a good enough number for the majority of casual users. And again, every month that you get that, that 40 megabytes again, and you never lose the old one. So we, we, we never want you to feel like you have to worry about whether or not you'll be able to find stuff that you did 10 years ago. So it'll just keep growing. Uh, if you pay, if you become a premium member, which is uh, five bucks a month or forty-five bucks a year, then um, that quota goes up to five hundred megabytes of new notes per month, and you get a bunch of other things. You get SSL everywhere. You get priority access to the recognition queues. You get uh, a real person to handle customer support. That sort of thing. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for giving me this great demo. Thanks, Robert. Thank you.